Hello and welcome to today's concert. And today we're in Middleton Parish Church, the Church of St. Leonard, patron saint of prisoners. Tom, my brother, is here filming and recording once again and bringing you this extremely historic church. Um, it's probably got a thousand years of history in this building. This main body of the church uh, was eventually built in medieval times, around 1412, by Thomas Langley, who came from Middleton, and better known as Cardinal Langley, one of the long-serving chancellors to several kings in medieval times. Slight alterations over the years, but pretty much a medieval church. It's incredible to bring you this building and the amazing windows. In fact, one of the windows at the front, the Flodden window, which dedicates the Middleton art and the part they played in the Battle of Flodden is thought to be the oldest war memorial in the UK, dating from 1513. So, some incredible history here today and this wonderful instrument, built in 1920 as a memorial to those who lost their lives in the First World War. The whole organ case and instrument is built for that memory. Um, and I love the instrument. It's a historic instrument, really. It's over 100 years old and as it was built. Um, incredible things at the side. You'll see, I can see the stop changing mechanism, which has not been covered up at all. So I have these buttons, which I can preset. Quite uh, basic for its time, but incredibly effective and a great concert instrument because look where I've sat right at the front of the church. There's no room to hide here as the organist of the church. You're right in front of everybody. So it's great for a concert. And I was meant to do a concert here last year which unfortunately couldn't go ahead so I thought I'd bring you one today and even though we've got an empty church there is another reason for bringing you a concert here today in fact there's a massive graveyard outside and you'll see graves and uh, tombs all around the church and in fact there's probably enough of my own ancestors buried in the graveyard opposite to fill this church over the past centuries many of them have been christened married and had funerals here and so we thought I'd bring you some of that history today and a wonderful link to this wonderful instrument and beautiful building. That was, of course, the Rondo by Purcell from Abdelazar, um, incidental music to the play of the same name, written in the 1690s. Uh, and we're keeping it with a very sort of English theme today. So I'm going to continue with the piece by Edward German. Edward German was a composer who wrote a lot of incidental music for plays. He was director of music at the Globe Theatre in London, and he wrote a set of pieces for a play, Henry VIII, um, a set of three dances. And they were so popular at the time that the Times um, asked that they be made into publications available for people. And in the first year, he sold 30,000 copies of the score of these pieces. In the first decade of the proms, they were the most popular piece played by an English composer, receiving 30 performances in the first 10 years of the proms. Amazingly popular. And I'm going to play you the Morris dance, a very traditional English dance. Uh, and this is sort of a, a mock Tudor style of writing, which Edward German was so well known for. This is an organ version I've made. So this is the Morris dance from Henry VIII by Edward German. Thank you. 
a brilliant, lively piece of music and very much sort of trying to recreate Tudor times. Now, since we've got an organ from the 1920s, I thought I wanted to give you some music from that period and the composer Alfred Hollins. Now, Alfred Hollins was born in Hull in the late 19th century. He was blind from birth uh, and he wrote an absolutely fascinating book called A Blind Musician Looks Back, telling of his childhood upbringing uh, and his life as an organist in the 19th and early 20th century. But as a blind organist, incredible, he went to the Upper Norwood School for the Blind in London. He became organist at the Crystal Palace. He spent most of his life at St George's Church in Edinburgh as organist there. He performed piano concertos for Queen Victoria, the German royal family, um, and he toured around 600,000 miles, it's thought, to South Africa, all across America, uh, New Zealand, Australia, you name it, he went absolutely everywhere. A really fascinating guy. And just before um, lockdown started in this country, we gave our last concert at Caird Hall in Dundee, which is an instrument which K H uh, Hollins designed in 1923, one of the first great concert hall organs in the UK. And we're going back there in 2023 to give a piano and organ concerts for their centenary. So I thought I'd include a piece because this organ is of the same period. This is by Rushworth and Draper from Liverpool. Um, very sort of orchestral in sound. Not the biggest organ in the world, but we've got two expression boxes for some beautiful sounds and Hollins wrote for that style of instrument. I'm going to play his Grand Coeur, written in 1895. Full organ at the opening, then beautiful flute solos, clarinet solos and string sounds building up to a full organ finish. I hope you enjoy this. It's a brilliant, exciting piece of music. This is Grand Coeur No. 1 by Alfred Hollins.
hope you enjoyed that. It's a, a really, really exciting piece of music, very much of its time, but suits this style of instrument brilliantly. And uh, Alfred Hollins was such a fascinating person. It's great to play some of his music as well. Now, we're in Middleton Parish Church, where, as I said, there's a lot of history, but also some personal links. One of our ancestors, for Tom and I, uh, Samuel Bamford, is buried in the graveyard opposite, and there's a large memorial too. Um, a very important figure in the area involved in an event known as Peterloo, or the Peterloo Massacre, which took place on the 16th of August 1819 in Manchester, in what's presently almost the centre of the city. Um, this event was a gathering of around 60,000 people uh, who wanted parliamentary reform. At the time, um, in the whole of Lancashire and Manchester, about a million people were re represented by only two members of parliament. Uh, the Corn Laws had been brought in, uh, and also there was great depression and poverty, and people were literally starving. Samuel Bamford led the contingency from Middleton, just at the bottom of the hill outside of the church here. And Tom will show you the plaque, the blue plaque, which is there now, uh, and led a large party into Manchester at the time. Now, the piece I've written, this is why I'm getting to it, I wrote a piece called Peterloo 1819, uh, which describes the events of the day musically. Um, I wanted to commemorate the event, as a, especially as, as it's got the, such a strong family link. And it's such an important political event as well. And in the piece of music, it follows exactly what happened. On the day, they met here on a hot summer's day. It was August, a beautiful day. Men, women, children, all dressed in their Sunday best, going to a peaceful rally, literally, uh, a peaceful protest. No whip weapons to be taken. They marched from here into Manchester and all met up. Um, the magistrates were slightly wary of these events and... Uh, they sort of expected trouble, so they'd got the cavalry and the army, but it was a completely peaceful event. However, the magistrates weren't happy. They read the Riot Act and asked the cavalry and the yeomanry to disperse the crowd. Unfortunately, the cavalry charged the crowd with their sabres drawn, literally cutting at the crowd. And in the end, about 16 people were killed and over 600 were injured. And it became known as the Peterloo Massacre because it was quite shortly after Waterloo and they'd gathered in Peter's Fields in Manchester. Um, Samuel Bamford wrote an eyewitness account of that day. Um, a very important um, document, really, of, of an eyewitness who'd managed to be there at the event. And Samuel Bamford was also... Uh, put on a charge of treason at the time, but he wasn't sentenced at the end of it, um, and spent a year in prison. Throughout his life, he was very sort of politically involved in events such as this, uh, but always in a peaceful way, a, a pacifist uh, style of march that became popular later with people like Gandhi. Um, it's that sort of style. Um, but it became an event which wasn't fully recognised until fairly recently. Uh, it was described as an event where people had been dispersed on a plaque in Manchester until 2007, where a red plaque, which now stands there, Tom will show you, on Peter Street, just across from where the event happened, actually gives you the proper facts of the day. Now, the piece of music follows that. It gets quite hectic at times and builds to the end. But I want it to be the fact that people do have a voice now. Um, it did change. There was parliamentary reform. And so it ends slightly heroically on a slightly more positive note than the day ended. I hope you enjoy this. It uses all the colours of the organ, dramatic in places, and uh, great to bring you an event such as that in a musical form. So this is my own composition, Peterloo 1819.
brought you some of the drama I was trying to portray. And uh, it's lovely to be able to share my own music in this place, which has so much sort of family history, really. Um, while we're on the sort of subjects of family and everything, you'll notice around me there's literally graves and tombs, tombstones and gravestones on the floor, all around me and around the console, dating back hundreds and hundreds of years. Um, a church like this will have seen many lives, and people didn't always live that long many, many years ago. Um, I'm going to play a piece by Purcell, which relates to that very closely. It's When I Am Laid in Earth, or Dido's Lament from Dido and Aeneas by Henry Purcell. Now, Purcell only lived about, we think, 35 or 36 years, and he didn't really go anywhere. He was born literally outside Westminster Abbey, lived there his whole life, was organist at Westminster Abbey and the Chapel Royal, and is buried almost adjacent the organ in Westminster Abbey. Um, quite a short life, but he wrote a huge amount of music, and this is one of his best-known works. Um, Dido and Aeneas tells the tale of the Trojan hero in a Roman legend, Aeneas, um, whose ship is blown off course and he lands in Carthage, where he meets the queen of Carthage, Dido. They fall in love and are married, but Aeneas, uh, he receives word that he should continue on to Italy, where he was heading, and leaves her. She's absolutely devastated and she tells him that he leaves, she will die. Uh, he knows this and goes anyway, unfortunately. It's a tragedy and it's an opera. Operas have always had these sort of tales. Um, but it's a very, very beautiful piece of music. She sings this lament about when I am laid in earth. And Purcell follows this musically absolutely incredibly because he has a descending line in the bass which almost represents the being laid in earth. And it's played every year at the Cenotaph in London to commemorate uh, Remembrance Day. And since this instrument is actually dedicated to all those who lost their lives in the First World War, it seems like the perfect piece of music. This is an organ version I've made using the warm strings and very sort of warm flu sounds of the organ. And for such a modest instrument, you can get some incredible sounds out of this organ. So I hope we're going to get them now. Um, this is Dido's Lament, or When I Am Laid in Earth, by Henry Purcell from Dido and Aeneas.
I think you'll probably need a little bit of cheering up after that one. Um, and what better way to do it than with a wedding? As I said, this church, there'll be many baptisms, funerals, but also weddings. And so I'm going to play the Wedding March by Mendelssohn, probably the most famous piece of Wedding March music after uh, Richard Wagner's Bridal March, and a piece I've played thousands of times at weddings over the years. I became a church organist just after I started learning the organ. So from the age of, age of 11, um, I was playing for people's weddings. And whenever I used to go and see the priest beforehand, they only told me the pieces on the day of the wedding, uh, they would always say, oh, the usual, please, which was the bridal march and the wedding march, and usually the same two hymns. Um, but at the same time, I've not played for weddings for quite a long time. I only play for family, friends, every now and again. Uh, and you think it's a brilliant, brilliant piece of music. It became famous uh, through Queen Victoria's daughter, who was also Princess Victoria, and her wedding in 1858 to the future uh, Emperor of Prussia, the largest German principality. Um, and it was this wedding at St. James's Palace at the chapel in London, which set a fashion. She had the bridal march and the wedding march, and from then on, everyone had it. Mendelssohn was, of course, a great favourite with Queen Victoria and Prince Albert, and he used to visit them and play for them. And when he visited this country, he would play the wedding march in concert on the organ. So there's a great tradition of playing this on the organ. Originally for orchestra, from A Midsummer Night's Dream, um, it's the incidental music from the Shakespeare play. Um, this is an organ version that I've used many times and whenever I've played this at weddings I would always play the full piece. Most of the time I think people play a, a cut version and it takes two minutes or three minutes to get everybody out of the church and I used to be left on my own playing this at the end because it's such wonderful music. Forget it's a wedding march really, it's just a great great piece by Mendelssohn. So I hope you enjoy hearing this in this wonderful church on this great instrument. This is the wedding march by Mendelssohn.
a brilliant piece of music and great to hear it as almost a, a concert piece rather than in a traditional wedding role. I'm going to move on to a piece by Elgar. We've got a very English theme in today's concerts. Everything relates to this country while we're in this historic church. And so one of the pieces which I wanted to include was Suspiri by Edward Elgar. Now, Elgar wrote this around 1915, 1914, at the start of the First World War. It was originally meant to be a part in the piece for some of his violin pieces, but he realised it had such great sort of intensity, and it's a very, very moving piece of music, that he wanted to have it as a standalone piece and called it Suspiri, or Size. And you'll hear why, because... It's a very brooding sort of sound, but there's all these dissonant notes which are longing and sighing to sort of resolve. Um, originally, it's for strings with harp and harmonium or organ, and I've played harmonium and organ in versions of this many times with orchestras. It's a very beautiful piece of music, um, and this is a version I've done for organ solo. What I've got on this organ is two expressive chambers, so two of the manuals are enclosed in, in uh, boxes with shutters on, and I've got tremulance as well. And so with this, I can try and use the very sort of subtle sounds to gain that sort of string and organ-like uh, effect, really. A very subtle piece of music, uh, again, around the time of the First World War, and so with all the memorials and the organ in this place, it seems so suitable. I hope you enjoy this. This is Suspiri by Edward Elgar.
an incredibly poignant piece, probably not one of Elgar's best known, but so so moving and expressive, even on the organ, and using all these effects we've got to make that expression come through. We've reached the end of the concert, and uh, I hope you've enjoyed visiting Middleton Parish Church today. It's definitely worth a visit. It's an absolutely incredible church in an amazing spot. And you'll see also it's got a wooden bell tower, which was added many years um, ago, uh, an incredibly old sort of ancient style of tower. And Tom, hopefully, brought you lots of amazing shots all the way through. So I hope you enjoyed that and bringing you the sound and the look of this amazing place. Now, we've had a lot of ceremonial music today, so I thought I'd finish with one of the best known, one of the great, great ceremonial pieces of music, and that is Zadok the Priest by Handel. Handel wrote this for the coronation of King George II in 1727, and it uses the text from the Book of Kings from the Bible, which has been used at every coronation since I think it's 935 and the coronation of Edgar. Yes, it's an old uh, tradition. Uh, Handel set it to music, of course, and it's been used at every coronation ever since. Uh, originally for full orchestra and choir, there's a continual organ part which you play in the orchestra, I've done many times, uh, but I thought people have asked for this as a piece and it's such a great opening, it's probably one of the most famous openings of a piece in the world, a great, great build-up, it leads into a chorus of God Save the King, uh, May the King Live Forever, and there's three sections all together, but just a great, great piece of music, and Handel he was a keyboard player, so everything almost fits so well under the hands. Normally I play this for lots of choirs, choral societies, it's a very sort of standard thing to, to know as an organist, but it's lovely to play it as a solo and just hear this music for what it is, brilliant, brilliant music. So, thank you to Tom for filming and recording today and bringing this wonderful church. Thank you to everyone at Middleton Parish Church for allowing us to come in and sharing this wonderful building and instrument with you. And thank you so much for watching today. Hope you enjoyed it and we'll be bringing you more concerts very soon. And to finish with today then, this is Zadok the Priest.